G'day guys, welcome back to another video. Um, sorry if this video is a little bit shaky and windy at the moment. I'm in the car on the way up to Melbourne and basically today's video is just going to be a lot of work on the tub, the Ranger tub that I've chucked on the patrol. So in the last video you would have seen that I mounted it up and it was looking pretty decent but there's a few things that I'm not happy with. So first of all I want to get it a bit closer to the cab um, and second of all it's sitting about 10 to 15 mil too high. Um, it's not super noticeable, but I do want to try to get this to look pretty good. So, um, yeah, I'm heading up to Melbourne to see Jake from Styleworks again. Once again, he's uh, saving my ass because next weekend we're actually heading up to the snow. So, I've got to get this done this weekend or the tub's not going to really be able to sort of use. It's just going to be, um, it'll probably just get damaged and stuff because there's clearance issues and uh, bracing issues as well. But I'll show you all that when I get up to Melbourne. But basically, the weather in Warrnambool where I'm living, um, it's shit house at the moment and I've just been worried that if I try to do it at home, um, I don't have a shed or anything, so if I get caught out in the rain or anything, I won't get anything done and then basically I can't go to the snow. So Jake's gonna be nice enough to let me use his shed again, so shout out to him. Uh, and then while I'm actually up there, he's building a little upstairs room in his shed and needs all the walls and stuff straightened and I'm a qualified carpenter, so. I'll um, help him back by straightening them for him and then tomorrow afternoon we'll smash the tub out hopefully. So when I get up to Melbourne I'll get the camera back out and sort of show you what we've got to get done. I've got a few bits of pieces of metal that I've got to weld on um, to brace the bottom of the tub as well as um, to weld to the sides where I've cut to suit the patrol body shape. Um, since I've cut that it's just really flimsy because there's nothing bracing it now but I'll show you that probably when we get up there. Alright so I'm at Jake's now but he's just in the forklift at the moment getting ready to flex it out to see where it's hitting first. Um, so I'll give you a quick run around on what we're trying to do tonight. First thing we're going to do is fix this gap here. It's currently like 40 or 50 mil so we want to get that a bit closer um, and then I want to use this bit of 75 by 10 mil um, to basically brace from mount to mount and it'll also allow me if I cut out where it's mounted currently and bolt it to underneath the um, steel instead that should lower at 20 mil because if you sort of look along this line here you can see that's sitting about 20 mil high there and then also you can see I've started cutting out the wheel wells because um, it was hitting basically after a few inches of up travel it was hitting so now I can tuck the 37s, but we're gonna fully flex it and see if we need to take any more out. Back wheels off the ground now. Yeah, sit it there. I'll drop the tailgate and see if I can see inside that wheel. <laughs> yeah, you can see it's hitting at the top of the... It's actually hitting your mount. Yeah, yeah the tub mounts too. Oh, no. yeah, you can no. see it's just hitting. Um, so we're probably going to have to cut the whole section out. Um, I was just cutting that out to extend it but basically if it's hitting there then I can't retain that factory part I'll probably have to cut from there all the way up a bit higher um, but it's not hitting too bad so maybe if I just extend the bump stops 10 mil I might get away with it that's on camera <laughs> What's the bump stops doing? It's pretty much fully compressed on the bump stop too. And that's basically the most I'd want that shock to compress. There's a bit of bracing in there. Maybe I need to cut a bit more out because I can feel that fully hitting the tire. It might actually not be too bad. All right, so we just took all the mounts out and now basically to get it to move forward, you can see one of my tray mounts here. It's actually hitting on the cross member here. So to get it to move forward anymore, we're gonna have to do a notch here um, so it stops hitting there. 
So that's the first thing we're going to do, and then from there we can do the rest. So this is what we got up to last night. Basically, I did a cut out here where the tray mount's going to come through. Another one on that side. So now instead of it mounting underneath the um, tub itself, it's going to come through and hit under this once I've welded that. So because of these ridges here, that's going to give it about 20 mil. Um, so that should drop the top of the tub down 20 mil. And then same in the rear. I've cut out where it was originally mounted here. So if I get down with it, you can see the difference in the height there. So I've just got these all centered. Um, and now I'll grind back a bit of this paint and then I'll just be able to do little stitch welds on each ridge on both sides the whole way along. And then just drill some holes here and bolt them in. So you got your safety welding gear on. <laughs> All right, so now that we've got those welded in, We've got the um, tub somewhat strapped up so we can just lift it up and then I'll back the car in and we can just keep testing it for clearance and stuff. We just got it sitting somewhat in position. The front's perfect, so you can see now those towers come through and sit underneath this. And now that height there is basically spot on and we've got a much tighter gap here. Um, but the rear is just gonna need a bit of work still. We haven't got that fully down um, as it's starting to hit on the brake lines um, on the coil tower. So we're just gonna come up with a plan with that. All right, so we had the rear sitting a bit too high, so what we had to do is we actually did like a notch here so that the coil towers can come through because the brake lines and stuff are here. So we've done that check out and then we'll plate over the top of it so that we get rid of the lower ridges, um, which gives us about 20 mil more clearance and now it's sitting perfect. Um, then we cut this rear brace that we're going to start welding on now. Um, so I'll do a few tacks here then fully rest it down again, do all the clearance checks um, and if we're happy we'll weld pull them out off and we'll be good to go. Alright, so just got both those braces fully welded off and now you can see our next job is we're going to try and retain the factory look of these wheel wells. So we've got the off cut of where it used to be and we're going to try slide it back this way, um, sort of where it's sitting roughly now and then just fill in the middle section with another piece out of a ranger tub. But we're just trying to figure out where it needs to sit because on full tuck the 37 actually scrubs on this tray mount a little bit. so. I'm gonna cut a bit more off this tray mount, but then I also want it to sort of scrub against this because I'd prefer it to scrub against something flat and round and smooth than to um, dig into the tray mount. So we'll find the perfect placement for that and then we can weld that to the tub again. All right, so while Jake's been doing these wheel wells, I um, 
plated over the top of the, where we cut out for the um, brake lines and stuff. So I, I packed it up 10 mil, then put this sheet over it, um, just did some tack welds. And then the rest, I'm just going to seam seal in anyway with Sikaflex and that. So I didn't want to fully weld the whole thing off because yeah, all, all these holes all around that edge um, and around here is all going to get plated and then seam sealed. So it's all waterproof again. So basically our plan with the wheel tubs is, um, you can see where I've cut it there, which there's normally, it normally comes back down there. Um, so to get that new section, luckily for me, Jake actually has the back end of his Ranger tub that he has to clear for his 37s because he's got this full on wide body kit. So he's got to cut his out. So we're going to use the three quarters of his to use on mine if that makes sense so I'll go and show you I don't know if you can hear me with the grinding but we'll cut out three quarters of his which is the length I need which you can see he's nearly done cutting that now and then we'll stitch that into mine which will extend it so you can see he's only leaving a quarter where I've still got two thirds sort of so should work out perfect and keep it looking super factory so like I was saying in that last clip um, we've just cut this out of Jake's tub and you can see this is originally the size and the shape of where it sits. And then we've cut the back two thirds of it. And then we've kept my front two thirds of it so that we can extend it. And now that will basically be able to sit like that and give me a much longer wheel tub and keep it super factory looking. So now we're just gonna sort of check around this where we put all this bracing in so we can get it down flush and then weld it all in. We just finished putting this section in got a lot of little welds around the whole perimeter of it and then we've just left this with a bit of gap around it um, because what I'll do when I get home is I'll plate off this all around um, and section that off so it's all watertight as well um, so now we're just going to give this hit with the um, flappy disc and then we'll seam seal the whole thing to tidy it up a bit got both sides fully seam sealed in now all welded up looking pretty good um, and now the last job we've got to do is just brace these side bits. Um, I'm just going to do a temporary setup for now using a bit of flat bar um, bent up to press against the side of the body to hold it in and then bolt it in behind. There's some bolts sort of there, there and there that I'll be able to use. So if I drill a hole sort of there and then do a fold here, I should be able to pull the body out and hold it in spot um, and then when I get home, I can make another bracket up to get this bottom piece as well, bolt it up to something else. But yeah, super happy with these wheel wells from the inside. You can see it looks pretty factory still. I'll probably seam seal in here as well. Alright guys, so it's actually the next day now. Uh, we finished up at Jake's shed. We got these last little brackets in i don't know if you can see in there but basically it's just screwed into the back wall there and then sicker flexed here so that's solid there now um i will end up pulling the tub off and doing a more permanent setup there but for now that just gets rid of all the movement in there um which looks a lot nicer as you can see like i said we've got the wheel tubs done all the bracing done it's a lot nicer now and the next job i've got to do before this snow trip is I've actually got to try and set this fuel tank up. It's a 55 litre fuel tank from Outback Equipment. And it's basically just gonna, I'm gonna try set it up to gravity feed from that bunk down the bottom into my tank because my biggest problem at the moment with long trips is I don't have a main tank. Uh, when I'm gonna run my comp truck sort of tray set up and I take the tub off, it obviously finishes a bit shorter. So, um, the main tank was never there so i've got a long range sub tank which only holds 75 liters which in a tb48 doesn't get you that far it's about 350 k so this will give me an extra 55 liters i'll be able to fill from here and try and set it up to just gravity feed from that down into the main tank but that's like a 20 mil barb at the moment and if i can get the camera in here uh the filler there is 38 mil um, which is where the filler neck goes up to at the moment but there is another port over there which is sort of similar size at 20 mil so i'm thinking of just blanking this off 
and run, running this bit of fuel hose that I got um, from there up to there, blanking that off and seeing how that goes and hopefully that just works. I just need to make sure everything is like sealed properly uh, so I've got heaps of hose clamps and stuff because obviously if it's been gravity fed, once that tank fills up, it'll fill up through the hose and into that. And if it wasn't super tight, then obviously fuel's gonna leak everywhere. So hopefully this plan works. Otherwise I'll have to come up with another idea, but I'll probably just get this done. I won't feel much of it, but I'll update you once it's in. I did end up getting this tank in and got it all working mint. You can see the little hose coming through there. Um, but now I've just pulled it back out after having all the mounts and stuff in and I've given the whole inside of this tub a good um, hit with the um, wire wheel here, get all the little bits of rust off, gave it a good wipe and clean and then I've hit it with um, this underbody rust coating. It's sort of got like a tar um, material in it and it's super thick and obviously prevents rust and that so it's making it look a lot nicer. Made those tub um, wells look a lot nicer too, blended them in. Obviously, it's not perfect, but considering it's a ranger tub on a patrol, I reckon it looks pretty good. And I do have a set of drawers going in tomorrow, so that'll cover all that in. Obviously, fuel tank covers the back in, and then I'll probably make storage boxes around the wheel wells anyway, so you'll only see the top half anyway, which is all still factory. But yeah, I'll chuck this back in now that this paint's dry and should be good to go. Just for reference, this is what the tank looks like. I've basically just got a heap of L brackets holding it in so it can't move up, down, left or right. Um, and then the hose just runs off there. I've just got to put a bit of silicon around that hose so it can't move and hit on the sharp edge. Um, and then that basically wraps that up. So I'll film a bit tomorrow when I get the drawers and everything in. I've got to chuck the tub rack and tent back on, getting ready for this snow trip. So this clip is actually after the trip. So we've just gotten back from a sort of five or six day high country trip. Um, I've taken the drawers out just to clean everything out, but the drawers worked well. The fuel tank worked really well too. So the gravity feed um, didn't leak at all. Gave me another sort of 250 to 300 kilometers out of the tank. Um, the only thing I will say is just because it's coming out of a 20 mil fuel hose, um, it does take a while so if you if say you both your tanks are dead empty and you start filling up this one um this will probably fill up before it's fully drained into the bottom one if that makes sense so you sort of have to fill it up let it sit for a bit and then fill it up again um if you're at the servo but it's still worth the um for the price of it sort of thing like it's definitely better than the alternative which is either run no second tank or have like a fully custom um, built tank. So for me, this works perfect. Um, the tub was super good on the trip. I've taken the tub rack and stuff back off again, obviously, but yeah, just gotta give this a good clean, make some custom wings and that. But that basically wraps up for this video. Um, there's still a bit to do to this tub. Um, obviously you gotta mold the flares, which we gotta start on, but um, just yeah, did, ran out of time, so. I'll head back up to Styleworks and see Jake and we'll mold them in, um, maybe do a tub chop. Um, we'll see how we go. And I have another plan for the back section of this, but um, I'll save that for another video as well. So hope you guys have enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one. Cheers.